Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at temperate broadleaf and tropical rainforest for your AQA A-level environmental science. A-level environmental science, topic one, the living environment. Lesson eight, temperate broadleaf and tropical rainforests. Temperate broadleaf woodland are found in the Northern Hemisphere and are mainly formed by deciduous trees that lose their leaves every year, such as oak. There is a wide variety of tree species that you can find in a temperate woodland. The most dominant species found will depend on the soil type of the area. Temperate broadleaf woodlands, ecological features. When writing about the ecological features in your exam, it is important to use the right terminology. You must state that the temperate broadleaf woodlands have no major temperature extremes. This is not the same as writing that they have the same temperature all year round, as that is not true. So be careful with how you word it. There is no distinctive dry season, and as such, water is readily available all year round. They have deep, fertile soils, which the trees help create as they bind it together with their roots and add dead organic matter as leaf litter. Why are temperate broadleaf woodlands important? First and foremost, they tend to have a high biodiversity, a variety of living organisms, which creates a more stable habitat that is more resistant to change. Due to the high diversity, we obtain lots of different sources from our woodlands, such as timber and food, for example. There could also be a species living here that we have not fully researched yet and is able to provide a beneficial resource to human society like new medicine. The woodlands are also an important site for recreational use such as hiking, picnics and camping. Many studies have been completed that have found there is a strong benefit to mental and physical well-being if you live near or live in green spaces. Temperate broadleaf woodlands also play an essential role in the hydrological water cycle. We will study the water cycle in detail during the hydrosphere topic, but for now, it is just important to know that trees play a large role. They carry out evapotranspiration, which releases water vapour into the atmosphere, which will later fall as precipitation. Additionally, they add dead organic matter to the soil to increase fertility, which usually means the soil is more aerated and allows water to infiltrate into it. They also act to intercept rainfall from hitting the ground, which can prevent waterlogging of the soil and flooding. Finally, they carry out carbon sequestration. This process is a natural process that occurs in the biosphere, living organisms. As trees absorb carbon dioxide in photosynthesis, it then gets stored in their woody tissue, hence sequestering and reducing the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. This has played a huge role in reducing the greenhouse effect caused by greenhouse gases, absorbing infrared, heat, and warming the Earth's temperature. Threats faced by temperate broadleaf woodlands. Deforestation. Deforestation can happen for a number of reasons, but mostly to make space for another industry. Common examples are mining, agriculture, or urbanization. Clearing woodland in this way can lead to population fragmentation, which is where two parts of a population get split and can no longer mix freely. This reduces the genetic variation in each population, which can make them more vulnerable to extinction. Conservation efforts include designating them as protected areas such as LNRs, local nature reserves, to protect them from deforestation. There is also extra legal protection put in place for anything considered an ancient woodland more than 400 years old as they tend to have a very high biodiversity that has gradually increased across that long time span so needs conserving. Moreover, there are management techniques that can be used to improve the sustainability of modern forestry. One example is coppicing, where trees are cut down to just above ground height to encourage multiple new growths. This helps enhance the natural habitat. We can also plant trees to have a mixed age and mixed species structure. This increases the variety of habitats available, for example, dead wood and young saplings, as well as the niches available, as each tree species may grow a different fruit or nut, which should help both increase biodiversity. Moving on to tropical rainforests. If you have a map to annotate, they are found in the equatorial regions. For example, the Amazon rainforest is found in South America. Tropical rainforests, ecological features. Starting with their ecological features, again, important to get the wording right on these to secure the marks in your exam. 
Firstly, they have very high light levels as they are found in and around the tropics, which receives the most solar insulation due to the tilt of the Earth on its axes. This means that there is a high primary productivity photosynthesis in these areas, which provides nutrition for extensive food webs. Due to their tropical location, the temperatures are warm and they have very high rainfall and humidity. These conditions allow plants to grow all year round, supplying reliable food supplies to animals living in the area. They can also be described as having a low seasonality, so unlike temperate woodlands, there aren't four completely different seasons. Why are tropical rainforests important? Tropical rainforests are an extremely important ecosystem, as they are biodiversity hotspots, being the most diverse terrestrial land ecosystems. A huge proportion of land animals live here, despite forests covering around 10% of the Earth's surface. Due to high biodiversity, a lot of plants and animals have developed defence mechanisms to protect themselves, such as chemicals which could be studied for medicine. There may also be crop wild relatives growing in the rainforest, which we need to protect to be able to improve the genetic diversity of our domestic crops. We also obtain lots of resources from our rainforests, such as tropical timber, including teak and mahogany. We also get fibres such as cotton and other materials such as rubber. Just like temperate broadleaf woodlands, tropical rainforests also play key roles in the hydrological cycle and sequestering carbon. Something extra to note is that due to the sheer number of trees in the Amazon rainforest, over half the rainfall comes from transpiration that has happened elsewhere in the forest, instead of evaporating from water bodies. Another role of tropical rainforests is soil maintenance. In the rainforest, soils tend to be very shallow, so tree root binding and addition of dead organic matter is essential in reducing the amount of soil that erodes away. The canopy also protects the soil from heavy rain, which would cause the rain splash erosion. What are the threats faced by the tropical rainforests? Deforestation. Despite their importance, tropical rainforests are facing some major threats that are resulting in them being destroyed at an alarming rate. Again, the big one is deforestation for agriculture, reservoir creation or timber collection. Fairly recently, there have been crops such as palm oil that have been grown on such a large scale that they have resulted in huge losses to forests. These crops are called cash crops as they sell at a good rate, so farmers want to plant as many as possible to ensure they get maximum income. Thankfully, palm oil isn't being grown on the scale that it was after public advertisements were aired to show how harmful it was. Deforestation destroys habitats and causes population fragmentation. Tourism and poaching are also threats to tropical rainforests. Tourism can cause disturbance and trampling of wildlife, as well as pollution and introduction of species. Poaching is illegal but difficult to enforce in such a large area, so they end up hunting and killing species for fur or other materials. Conservation. We are going to finish by looking at conservation efforts being put in place to try and protect our rainforests. As with temperate broadleaf, establishing them as protected areas should help reduce the amount of damaging activity that can occur in the forest. They can also be sustainably managed by setting quotas on the number of trees that can be harvested and setting expectations in terms of replanting rates. Something specific to rainforests is using a debt for nature swap. This is where more affluent countries will agree to write off another country's, usually a less economically developed country's, debt in return for them agreeing to protect their rainforests. Charities such as the WWF have helped organise debt for nature swaps to protect rainforests in countries such as the Philippines. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. Thank you.